I'm Jess. For those who don't know me, I work in Nottingham for a company called Experian. You'll probably know them. Uh, and today I want to talk about how systems are like a jigsaw puzzle. So I've done a few talks here and there, and I mostly talk about maintenance of systems and dealing with what a lot of people call legacy, because that's most of my experience, in all honesty. I love uh, older systems. I love all their quirks. Which brings me to a little bit of a prerequisite with this talk. I tend to refer to these things as pre-loved. Uh, and the reason being is there's a lot of negative connotations with legacy systems. And in my second week of coding, I was told that all code was legacy. It was dirty and bad and we can write it better. So I was trying to think about the systems I've worked with and I've got quite a fondness with them over the years. So I came up with kind of like a gum tree ad of it being a pre-loved system it's a bit vintage, but with a lot of its own personality. And the reason for this is because the way I view it, all these systems have been loved at some point. Someone has taken the time to build them, to architect them. They have their quirks that aren't documented, maybe not tested. But that's why we love them. And sometimes they're older, so hence the term legacy, but this isn't always the case. Some of these systems are actually quite new. They've just been written under pressures we don't understand, whether that's product pressures or uh, technology restrictions or otherwise. So be kind to your lovely pre-love systems. They don't, uh, they didn't <laughs> ask to be the way they are. But with that in mind, having worked with a number of these systems, uh, one of the key problems at the beginning is always understanding the domain. Now I've worked with a number of teams from being a junior dev through to leading the teams myself. And there's always a bit of a conflict on how we go about understanding a domain. Some people like to start from the bottom up. Other people like to start from the top down. And what I mean by that is some people like to start by going through the code and the components and putting them together. Other people like to start with the problem place, the space and the domain and go down to the code. I'm the latter and there's an analogy I use to explain why I go for this point of view, which is the lovely jigsaw puzzle. Apologies now for all my doodles. Uh, I like to draw. I'm not very good at it. So with isolation, we've probably become all too familiar with the jigsaw puzzle. It's one of the fun activities we've all started taking up that we used to take the mickey out of our grandma for doing. But let's, for instance, say that we've bought a jigsaw puzzle from a charity shop. It's not brand new. It's been played with a lot. There's numerous things that can happen when we've got the pieces without the lid. For one, you don't know for ex that you do actually have one jigsaw in this box. It can contain multiple. And it's the same when you take over systems. Just because somebody says it's one domain doesn't mean it has necessarily one responsibility for all this code. It can often have different responsibilities. The last code base I took over actually had two separate domains, which you ended up separating. But they're entirely unrelated. Another thing that can happen is that you can have missing pieces. In terms of domains, again, sometimes you haven't been passed over a piece of code that's not been documented or just been forgotten about. Other times, other teams have responsibility for it. Have you ever worked in a team, had some code, and then not really known why you've got it? This happens often, especially in bigger companies, and that can be your missing piece. Maybe it lives with someone else. It starts that conversation. You can have extra floating pieces that you don't really know what to do with. Maybe you want to discard them and throw them in the bin. Again, same with your systems. Nonetheless, with all of this, <laughs> with jigsaw puzzles or with code, without that big picture at the beginning, it really makes life quite difficult. And this is why I think going from a top down view is a lot easier when you're coming to understand the domains of the code you're working with. With a jigsaw puzzle, I like to have that picture in front of me so I know what I'm building up to, what all these little pieces are supposed to connect together. I'm not trying to jam these pieces together to try and make a right fit, not really knowing if it's correct. And it's the same with the systems. I like to know what I'm working towards, what this domain, what this system is supposed to be doing. So then I can take the small pieces, understand how they fit together, whether they're actually supposed to be there, whether they're supposed to live somewhere else, or whether we can just throw them in the bin. And let's face it, all of us love deleting a bit of code, so it's always fun we to throw some stuff in the bin. So how do we go about this? It's fine for me to say jigsaw puzzles and pieces and pictures, but it doesn't really tell you much about understanding the domains you're given. And this is where we use the people. Your users and stakeholders have that picture. And these come in many forms. 
some of which actually I'll just go through all of them because it turns out I'm not speaking as slowly as I thought I was. You've got your project managers and your project owners who've worked with this system already. They have a high level view of what it's supposed to do. What I like to do in a non-social distancing capacity was to take these people into a room with a whiteboard and go, please draw me your journeys. What does good look like for a customer? What cases can these fail and what will the customer experience? And that customer can be your consumer, it can be an actual customer, it depends on which system you've taken over. Now with social distancing, you can do similar things with the likes of Trello or Google Jamboard. What you want is just the bullet points of what the system steps are. As a customer, I expect to give you this and get this in return, no matter what form of customer it is. This gives you a really good start for A, your later testing if you want to do acceptance testing, but also that picture for what these components are eventually going to match to. Another thing is your people who are consuming. If you're a back-end service, um, I'm a back-end dev, so I tend to lean towards this for examples. But if you've got a team who are consuming from you, internal or external, they'll have documentation on how they expect to interact with you. If you can ask for that documentation, it gives you an idea of not only what the interaction should be like and what those boundaries are, which are really important to you, but also find out about any service level agreements that you need to adhere to, to make sure that you're not breaking any of those because those have business impact. And I quite like if you've got a good relationship with the team, especially if it's internal, to just go, if you've got a new person working on our domain, what do you tell them? It tells you a lot about some of the problems they have with your domain as well. It just starts to outline the boundaries and what these interactions are supposed to look like. The other thing that's quite nice, if you can, is to actually use, get feedback from the customer themselves, whether this is through focus groups or seeing how somebody's interacting with a form on a screen through recordings or otherwise. If your domain has some sort of outwardly facing component, it's really good to see actually how it's being used. Once you've got an idea of this, you can take your team through the domain, see if it matches up to all the things that you've gone through, see if there's anything missing. Uh, you can do this as a department-wide thing and then other people can also interact. So you might fill some gaps this way as well. You can talk to the business about the key performance indicators for your, uh, your services. So what is it that your business is looking to get from this system? Is it a certain customer throughput? Is it a certain amount of money? and trying to align that to how your domain works with your customers and those kind of goals. See if they align, see if they need to be reassessed as KPIs or whether the domain itself needs to be reassessed. And then we get to the interesting bit if you're a dev, which is actually assessing the components. By this point in your jigsaw puzzle, you have the picture, which is great. Now you've got a whole load of components that have been handed to you that you don't necessarily know what the state of them are or what they are doing. So for this, open the code, see if it builds. You'll be surprised how many times it doesn't if you're lucky like me. Have a look at the tests, try and run them, see if they make sense against the code, see if they actually make sense as tests, check for asserts true equals true. <laughs> Happens more time than I like to admit. But just check through the code at high level, um, nothing too intricate. Maybe check against Dan's talk earlier, that'd be quite nice. Then also checking against the documentation and then seeing if it maps to any of the story that you've been given from your users. So if it matches to your picture and how it might do. It's quite revealing going this way because you're going to see the improvements that you would want to make on the system as well. Um, personally, going from bottom up, so putting these components together before knowing what I'm trying to make. I've had to go back through to try and find out where we can improve for those different KPIs, for the customer's needs, et cetera. Whereas it becomes really obvious this way. Ah, oh, this is amazing. I'm totally gonna make the 10 minutes. I thought I wasn't gonna. <laughs> um, but I would happily take any questions in the chat or on the .NET Oxford Slack group. And I get to say thank you. And I went under time winning. Um, so after me is Dushyant with MS Build and NuGet.